All right, folks, Josh is over here working on this Ford Escape and the rear trailing arms. Pretty notorious for these bushings going bad. Now, this one's really bad. In a sense, you can just take it out. And this is typically how they are. You've got to take a look up underneath the plastic when you get these things in for service to look at these bushings, see how bad they are. It's usually not a big deal because these arms, you buy the whole arm right from Ford and they're super cheap. However, right now, they're all on back order and have been for a while. So I'm going to show you real quick how to pop in a new bushing. They're not too difficult of a job to do. We've already done one. I've done a couple sets of these in the past. If the bushing doesn't just pull out by hand, just lock it in your vise and, and push the arm up and around and it, and it pops right out. That's what I did with this one. The thing is you're still left with the metal sleeve. So either take a cutoff wheel and cut it, use an air hammer like we're gonna, or take a torch and just slit it. We'll just stick it here in the vise. We'll clamp it down. We're gonna use the inside cutter or outside cutter, whatever cutter you call that for the air hammer. See if we can't get a hold of it. It slices it, knocks it out. Clean up the hole. And then go to the press, come up with some kind of funny configuration to push it in. It runs, now if you don't know which way it goes, it does run parallel, I guess, with the arm. So if the arm's sitting level on this spot, you know, the bushing runs parallel with it. Now these are a bushing by none other than Dorman, your classic 523-067. They seem to work good and fit well, so we can't uh, knock them on this one. Let's go get this pushed in. So nothing real fancy on the press. I took a cup out of our hub tamer kit. You probably use a piece of pipe. And then on these control arms, or you can put it on only one side. So this side has a raised portion on it. This side's indented. Sits pretty flat. Should have got a bigger one. This one sits up on the weld a little. But quite honestly, these bushings push in pretty easily. And then I've got a, just a round disc I had with a hole in it and then a socket. So your standard shop adapters. Both sides of the bushing are tapered and it sits in so it's about a 50-50 split. A little bit sticks past each side. Uh, what I like to do is eyeball it because we're pros. Get it eyeballed about where you're going to have it. Get her set up here. Give it a little bit of a wiggle so it kind of stays. Make 100% sure you're happy with it before you push it in. We'll stick this baby on there. We'll stick this on there. And you don't have to get super crazy about making sure it's lined up perfect because like I say, they do go in pretty easy. They self-center. Famous last words. We'll get this kind of started here and it should it should straighten itself up pretty easily and then we just drive it home it might be a good idea to stop and check to make sure you have it what you want it. and then when we have a, about a all oh, three sixteenths of an inch sticking out we should be about halfway on both sides here whatever that means Okay, that looks good. Knock this baby off. And we probably went through just a tiny bit too much. We got a little more exposed on this side. I can push that back just a whisker, but I don't think it's really gonna matter how that sits if you're just a little bit over. But you can see how it's parallel. Uh, maybe you can't, but with that half. And even if you're off just a scotch, it's really not gonna matter either. And then just do the same thing to the other side, obviously. Like I say, seems to be a pretty good product from Dorman so far. Yeah, trailing iron bushing, 523067. I haven't installed them on vehicles long enough to know their longevity. I don't know what year this is, but the OEM one doesn't hold up very good. So if this holds up for a few years, well, it's as good as OEM in my book. So the way Josh has it on his lift here, uh, working on the alignment rack, he's got the bridge jack right under it, suspension compressed. And all his bolt holes and stuff line up pretty easy. So just the three bolts in the back, your ABS wire, and then in this hole is where the uh, parking brake cable goes. And then they just hook up in. I don't know if I'll be able to get in here, but right up there in the body, just two bolts there. So relatively easy job to do. If you're DIYing it and your suspension's hanging, it's quite a bit harder. You're gonna have to jack it up under the wheel. 
according to the interweb here, 13 to 19 escapes. A uh, host of Ford Focus, C Max, Mazda 3s, 5s, and a bunch of Volvos that this bushing fits. Not familiar with most of those makes and models, but I am familiar with doing these on a Ford Escape, and it's not that big of a job. So, hope that helps somebody out if they're looking at that and contemplating whether or not to put bushings in it and want to know how difficult they push in and out. They're pretty easy, you just have to kind of finagle some stuff. Either take your arm off, take it to a, uh, a shop that has a press, have them press your bushings in and out for you. Or if you have your own shop press at home or a ball joint press or pretty much whatever you can kind of dream up, a vice, anything you can get them in, they don't go in that difficult. So, anyhow, folks, thanks for watching.